welcome to the NBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is the man, the myth, the hippogriff, Silver Quill. I am the ghost of reviewers past, present, and future. Oh my, so scary. What have you seen, done, and will do? I have seen that in season seven, fans will argue. Dun, dun, dun. All right, that seems logical. <laughs> And also joining us is the Pokemon trainer, Sapphire Heart Song. Okay, why is it with you? I'm always associated with the Pokemon trainer. I'm more than just the Pokemon trainer. I'm more than the Pokemon master. Yeah. <laughs> I'll think of something better next time. Keep you telling suck yourself Norman. that. <laughs> I'll keep telling myself that, and we'll see how. And also joining us today is the Cult of Personality, Toon Critic. What's good? I apologize if I'm not as energetic as I usually am, considering that I forgot that there was the podcast day, so I woke up and this guy over here is like, Hey, Tony, are you ready for the podcast? I look at my watch and I'm like, crap. <laughs> I couldn't have woken up an hour earlier. I'm sorry. Man, I haven't even got breakfast yet. This better be good. <laughs> well, unfortunately, this is the MBS show. It doesn't get good besides the intro. <laughs> Uh, that's us in a nutshell. But I hope you'll enjoy your time and share your opinions with us on this episode that we're going to do. This isn't entertaining. I'm going to eat Silver Quill. <laughs> well, you are going to meet him at BronyCon. And talking about the BronyCons, you are you guys are going there, right? Yes, oh, yes, we are. All of us are. I have I have first dibs to strangle Silver Quill because of the holy bonics thing. <laughs> and then oh. after that, I'm going to help him troll everybody. <laughs> How are you going to do that when I'm dead, Playa? That's wiggity whack. <laughs> you won't be too dead. I'll just be mostly dead. I'm not yeah. dead yet. <laughs> uh, so, uh, are you guys going to have a panel there? Yes. Well, have... um, well just Silver, you can go first. Well, we're just going to say we will have multitudinous panels. Uh, Silver has his own. Um, I have my own. Um, I've got a lip sync panel. I've got a a after hours sort of comedy hour that's going to be fun and that's about it all right you want to just pimp out the locations of where and when because people are going to listen to this and some people who listen to this are going to BronyCon. sure uh so my first one is uh red and black and wrong all over that's going to be my comedy hour it's going to be 6 30 on friday then i have the lip sync battles panel which is 12 30 at night so i hope some people who are ready to be <laughs> who are ready to have fun after hours will be there. Um, 1 p.m. on Saturday will be Cold Lab Chemistry. Uh, Silver Quill will be joining me for that. Yeah. And uh, I believe at 4 p.m. is Dr. Wolf's TF2 Analysis Anarchy panel. Um, I'm advertising that because you got people from the red and blue team that are going to be on that. And Silver, you have a panel on Sunday. Indeed, at 1 o'clock in the Hall of the Moon, because Princess Luna got my back. I'm going to be doing After the Fact Live, covering Putting Your Hoof Down. Oh, dear. All right, oh, all right. No. And Seppi, you, no pen? Yeah, yeah, Norman, no. I haven't been invited to anything, oh. even though this is my first BronyCon ever. Well, <laughs> Silver, is that all? One panel only? One panel only, he says. Uh, let's see, the collab panel. Yeah, that's a pretty good deal right there. Plus, I will be with Lightning Bliss selling uh, prints, shirts, buttons, stickers, all kind of memorabilia within the uh, Artist Alley and Mitter Hall. I was going to be their vending place watcher thing, I don't know, but sadly the rule state I can't. And oh, I'm also, also, I believe that KP has a uh, reviewer panel. Let's see here. Oh, you got invited to that? I think so, but I have to <laughs> double check. She can be a hard person to read sometime. While well, you check that, I'm going to tell you guys that Daniel Anthony from the MBS show and also the con chair for Friendship Express is going to be there too. He's going to be hosting the Asians Delegate Panel at 10 a.m. Uh, Hall of the Planets. So go there, meet him up, and just say potato chips. He'll get it. And uh, as for the MBS show card, he'll give it to you, I hope. So be there, just say potato chips, and it'll be fun. Let's hope that this year, that will be the meme. Mm. The meme. Yes. And 
Well, <laughs> as long as the, as long as this year's BronyCon isn't invaded every five seconds by someone yelling "Just do it" or passing someone's iPod playing to John Cena theme. <laughs> Well, no, no, that's rest- exactly that. That exactly was what it was. I couldn't go more than ten feet without either hearing someone yell "Just do it," or when I think there's a break, I pass by someone and they're playing the John Cena theme. Well, dude, that's what you get for being a wrestling fan. If you painted a big bullseye on you. <sighs> <sighs> yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> I am the biggest wrestling fan here. I should have been here for the freaking wrestling comic. Yeah, but that's been a while, and we haven't been in talks. So it's going to be, well, yeah, well, well, if there comes up a wrestling thing, I'll make sure to call you first. Okay. But talking about something and doing a review. Oh, yeah, that's why we're here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're joining us here because we are going to do, or we are going to review A Heartswarming Tale, Season 6, Episode 8, Overall Episode Number 125, Original Air Date, May 14, 2016, Written by Mike Vogel. So, this is interesting. An, an episode written by Mike Vogel himself, the ex-VP for Hasbro. So, that's cool. And this story, the synopsis is, Starlight Grimmer has a case of the holiday blues, so Twilight tries to help cure her by reading one of her favorite heartswarming Eve story, a heartswarming tale. So, I guess we start off by first impressions. And Silver, what do you think, man? Well, in the spirit of wrestling, I think that this episode brought a real suplex to the classic Christmas Hearts Carol. Uh, it's Christmas not, Carol. You didn't even use it right. Uh. But, <laughs> but, but the group thing could put a real stranglehold on individuality, leading to a submission by default. But oh, what's this? They got a steel chair of great songs. It's hitting no, it right in the spine. Uh, uh. Tune, tune, look at the bright side. He's not trying to be ghetto this time. For shizzle. <laughs> Well, at least it's not our truth. Uh, our truth? No, no. Our our truth is he's he's a special kind of wrestler. Let's put it at that. Oh my. <laughs> well, oh. either way, but uh, it's just it feels weird to do a Christmas Carol because it's been uh, it's been done everywhere. And to be honest, I think only one remake has really brought a fresh spin to it. That would be Scrooged. Which recognized not only the uh, the heartwarming aspect, but also the social commentary of a Christmas Carol. Is that the one with Jim Carrey? Uh, Bill no, I think Murray. The Scrooge is uh, Bill Murray. Yeah, right. yeah. Sorry, yes. my bad. Bill Murray. Uh, my Little Pony. It's a fun. It's a fun viewing. It's got its own style. I love the designs, but I do notice that they kind of dropped the ball with the, their version of Scrooge, Snowfall Frost. And there's an element of groupthink throughout the whole thing that makes me a little uncomfortable. Uh, I'll guess we'll get to that more later. Second up to bat is Seppi. Oh boy, this episode. It's a mixed bag of it was fun, I like the songs, there wasn't a song I didn't like actually, and well, I thought it was a fun take on Christmas Carol, even though when I first came in it's like, ah, this again. But no, even though not a lot of people say it's that refreshing, I found it pretty refreshing. Uh, I won't say that it's perfect, though. Like, there were some missed opportunities because of the, uh, you know, 22-minute run limit that they have. Like, with the love interest theme, they could have put Sunburst there, and that could have worked out via shipping. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I really don't have much to say. I mean, I recognize that it has a fun twist, but it's not perfect. Mm, all right, all right. And Toon, what about you, man? I think this episode showed to me that while thi- while certain things can be predictable, certain stories can be predictable if you've done them a thousand times, there's still some ways within different shows that predictable can still be enjoyable because I was watching this episode and I'm just like, oh, all right, let's lay out the formula here. Let's see what they do here. And I actually really enjoyed it. I was not expecting all the different songs. There was actually plenty of surprises to make the episode refreshing. Christmas Carol has always been um, a favorite of mine. My favorite is um, the Doctor Who Christmas Carol, which I believe <laughs> oh, yes, is, that one I remember. which is with uh, Matt Smith's Doctor, 11th Doctor, um, with 
with a heartwarming tale, I found it interesting that they put Starlight again into the villain position because I'm like, okay, we ha- we haven't seen this like a million times, but it works for her, I guess. Given the circumstances, it works. Um, I was surprised that of how the characters were used. I was surprised to see um, like Rainbow Dash of all characters being the um, the assistant to the Scrooge character. And then like you have the Bob McCrack. Or, yeah, yeah, I was expecting someone else. Um, I guess Pinkie Pie and uh, Applejack fit into their roles. Luna was the one that really surprised me, though. I think that's everyone. Oh else's, yeah, I uh, thought it was going opinion. to be Twilight of all people, but she's reading the story. It was a very meta sort of feel too when she's um, reading it. But yeah, I really did enjoy this episode. It's in my top five this season or seven. And as for me, the Christmas Carol story has been told a thousand times. We've seen multiple versions of it and depends on pick which one you'd like. And as for the pony version of said story, it's an interesting take on it. To say that I dislike it is not true. To say that I like it, it's it's hard for me to say that I really, really like it. It's one of those stories that has been done a thousand times, but I'm not bored of it. Like... This story here is fun. I like how they use certain characters and the introduction with how they pull the song out. Like you can tell that, oh, this episode is going to be full of song. And being a first time writer for the show, Mike Vogel really did well. And he really knew how to use the characters that he used in their situation. Like Pinkie Pie being really hyper and Luna being really menacing and scary. Yep, he did a really good job on this. And then Applejack's day off happened. <laughs> uh, yes. Mm. All things in time. Indeed. Yeah. But anyway, let's start off with the review. And as for note, spoilers ahead. If you haven't watched this episode yet, stop here, watch it, come back to us. Once you're done, let's start. So we start off the episode with Ponyville getting its holiday groove on. It's all snowy, everybody's happy, cheery, and it's that typical feeling of Christmas or heartwarming eve. Not to mention, it's the first time that I thought that Twilight's Castle actually looked in sync with the rest of Ponyville. Indeed. Is it me or has the cloud or the background or, you know, the sky color theme changed since we seen Ponyville in a snowy element? Like, um, what was that episode called? A winter wrap-up? It's got a uh, rainbow aurora going. Yeah. Was it just me? Like, I think in winter wrap-up, they didn't do that kind of color scheme. Well, yeah, but one, it wasn't really, uh, like, well, twilight, like, in that time zone, and they didn't have the castle. Hmm. Well, probably just me overthinking. Oh, also, there's a Christmas one starting with, uh, what you call this? Dash, Rainbow Dash, and the Turtle. What was it called? Oh, tank? Think. Yeah, tank, tank for the Memory. Yeah. There's shipping to be had with Lemon Hearts as so she get, gets under the mistletoe with some stallion. Oh, my. So there you go. Fa- fanfic writers, do something. <laughs> Yay. Over there. <laughs> There's probably at least two or three fanfics. You know how the community is. Anything small, they'll just swoop it right up. Yep, yep. Uh, so we... We join our heroes inside the castle, singing a song about decorating and the spirit of the heartswarming Eve. Uh, we get to see Rarity coordinating, um, decorating everything, and we get to see Derpy being Derpy. And, and we get to see Granny Smith kill a <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, is that Peep Squeak? That's not Pip Squeak. That's just some un- unnamed, which means that's the end. Oh. Let's I have here. the episode record right here. I'll, I'll mute in order to see this. No, it's yeah. also oh, on the God. wiki. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, apparently, it's known as Princess Aeroria. Oh. 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 Aero so, what? Uh, Aeroria. I-A. So, Aeroria. Hmm. Say that three times fast. I dare you. Aeroria, Aeroria, Aeroria. Uh, you you lose points for lack of heart. <laughs> <laughs> I won it again with some chutzpah. Area, area, area. Now we're talking. Okay. Uh, and talking about chutzpah, Derpy has the star, and well, 
<laughs> She's playing the role of the angel and star. Yay! Good on her. Oh, God! Fans, fan service! Now, actually, no, I can hear it now. On one half of the crowd, fan service! On the other half of the crowd, fan pandering! <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's like John Cena. Nobody can be happy around him. <laughs> okay, see, that's how yep. you do a wrestling he reference. Kill that I'll agree with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep, Randy Smith killed the Philly, alright. Oh, boy. Yeah, just like how Vince did with most of the wrestlers' career. Zing! Uh, <laughs> but wrestling reference aside, we get to see Starlight being grumpy, saying that, oh, Christmas is not my thing. You you know what, I'm going to the Bahamas having some heat and fun. You guys can enjoy this. Like, ugh. To be honest, I don't classify that as grumpy. I just said it's like, eh, whatever, like, lazy teenager. It's That's just what not- I think. She's just not feeling it. And of course, everyone acts with shock and horror because why do something different than the larger group? <laughs> Gas, Benny Gad, shock and awe. <laughs> do we want to tackle this now? Because um, this is yes. one of those situations. Okay, uh, Silver, why don't you bring it up then? Why don't I bring it up? Okay. The big thing behind, actually one very interesting element that this uh, episode brings is that is questioning whether or not uh, a heartwarming tale in the legend of the three tribes is really just a myth. Uh, Starlight and then later her proxy Snowfall both say Windigos are just a myth. And I find that fascinating, a myth within a, uh, within a world filled with fantasy monsters. But a lot of heartwarming is based on the idea, be nice to one another or, fr- or wind demons will come and freeze you all to death. Huh. And yet, somehow in this show, Trixie and other ponies are ostracized for having negative attitudes, but a pony that just doesn't quite feel like celebrating is somehow must snap in line and march in step with the greatest celebration. We will celebrate the housewarming. It will be the greatest time ever, and we will have lots of fun. On <laughs> there will be schnitzel. Oh, no. <laughs> it just strikes me as weird that everyone reacts with this horror. That someone is ex- is expressing free will, and that's where the this group think worry, which we'll see again later on. There I'm, is I'm, no free will in Ponyville. Didn't you know that? There are times I start to wonder, but meanwhile, throughout the show, other characters can have nasty, rotten attitudes, and they're shunned and basically ostracized. When I was like, well, okay, if if getting along to prevent Windigos is the goal, shouldn't you be trying to reform those people? <laughs> oh, wait, I'm sorry, we had the forced friendship spell. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, what I think is that uh, it's the tone, the current situation that Starlight was in. Like, she didn't really give a huge explanation of why she didn't really want it. Because, remember, her backstory was she's kind of a dictator. She forced everyone to be, well, grumpy like her and follow her mindset. So now when what? everybody... She's not grumpy, Norman. Back in the she, past when she was conquering. Oh, she wasn't grumpy then. She was totally happy sh- until you interrupted her. <laughs> Quiet! <laughs> 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 but still, it's one of those situations where she had her way. So people were forced to follow her way. Now that she has time to lament what he she's done... She's kind of feeling very guilty and, well, being in a crowded area, not ready to open up, she feels like she needs to rest up and just get it back into community. Well, that's how I look at it. Anyone else? Well, let's see, this is after No Second Prince, if I remember right. Mm-hmm, yes. All right, yes. so she's, so to her credit, she's tried to do the whole community thing, but hot cha cha, that did not go well. Hmm, yes. Yeah, really, we ended up with the Bella Trixie. <laughs> oh god, no. Do, 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 do. Yeah, but still. If you can't be him, join him. <laughs> uh, Dude, you got anything to say? This is the episode where I kind of started to sympathize a little bit more with, um, with Starlight. I see that she's just not the type of group activities considering all the stuff that happened. And also considering that while she is in a new area like Ponyville, She's in there as a fresh face. No one really knows exactly what she's done in the past. At least we'd assume she doesn't know. Because she was kind of just thrown in at, at the end of uh, season um, 
season five and everybody's just like, oh, she's a, if she's Twilight friend, then she's all of our friends. And like, okay, that, that logic makes sense. Sorry, I'm still waking up. <laughs> With Spike being shocked and Starlight saying, oh, it's just not my thing and I don't really feel like this holiday is important to me. And Twilight being Twilight decides that, hey, this is important. We like it. You should like it too. And I'm going to tell you a story. It's my favorite story. Now listen. I'm going to lecture her. <laughs> yes, it always works. Uh, D20 on story the Story version, though. Story version of lecturing. Yes. Uh, yeah, come on, Twilight. She causes no harm. No need for that now. Yeah, too late, yo. Too late, too late yo. It's in story time. Story time. And the story, yeah. is... story time within a story time. Yeah. Oh, shiznit. <laughs> yep. And said story is a Christmas carol or a heartwarming Eve carol. Something like that. And we get into Sid's story world where we are introduced to Snowfall, the proxy for Scrooge. Okay, Except- I want to say something right here, if I right. may. She stole my top hat. <laughs> <laughs> she really did, didn't she? Yes, I oh. love that top hat. I really do. It suits her so well. <laughs> Although it looks more steampunkish, if you ask me. Uh, yeah, I can uh, see that. Uh, slightly, not like it has like the potential to be steampunk. It depends on the color scheme choice. Yeah. But anyway, we are introduced to this world where Equestria was in the mid eighteen hundreds, something like that. I don't know. Victorian so, era. Yes, Victorian era would be perfect to describe the situation. And Snowfall. Apparently, she's an alchemist. I'm just surprised that she didn't lose her arm in the leg. Well, she didn't sacrifice her brother, so... Yep, that too. That's because she's an only child. <laughs> yep. Actually, no, just wait. We'll see Starlight Glimmer's brother, sister, somewhere down the line. It's happening for everyone. <laughs> Indeed. I gotta say, you've got one heck of a budget when you can turn lead into gold. Uh. <laughs> oh, the new box cock. Oh, that, that scared me. Okay, I'm a little bit more awake now. Thank you. <laughs> Get used to this. It's, it happens. Okay, well, you know, anything I do to help you wake up. <laughs> That's going to be me throwing you off the mountain. <laughs> yeah, oh, he told me yeah, Silver guy a new toy, and he's enjoying it. Amazingly. Like, Everyone come see me at BronyCon because I'm not going to make it out alive. Remember, <laughs> the code word is potato chips. <laughs> so anyway, um, Starlight here, or Snowfall here, is an alchemist. And she's trying to turn lead into gold. And she seems to be making it work until Christmas carolers comes in. Gosh, those dang cheery Christmas carolers and their Christmas songs. Well, and... it was more like Christmas bells or something like that. Although it's not Christmas in this universe, it's heartwarming. Eh. I know, but for point of reference and just for me to keep things really, really fast, Christmas it is. So, while Snowfall here just chews them out, we get to see Rainbow Dash as, uh, who now? Crutch- oh, uh, oh, Snowfall Dash. They were a little unoriginal with the title. Snowfall Frost, Snowfall Dash. Yeah, okay, Snowfall, wow, names. So we get to see her come in, clean up the mess, and just saying, hey, it's heartwarming Eve. Shouldn't, you know, take a break and just be cheerful and happy? And the bah humbug scenario comes in, and okay, whatever. Rainbow Dash here comes in saying that, hey, um, you think I can get work off early? And, well, the whole standard saying of, oh, if you want to waste your time doing the whole Christmas thing, you can do it, you, you know, blah, blah, blah. And Dash being Dash, okay, I'm out of here. Bye. So, Snowfall Tune, what do you think of Snowfall Dash? Say it in a Snowfall way. <laughs> Tune, that's oh, you. Gosh. Hmm? What? <laughs> I, I just I say... I completely missed the joke there. <laughs> Well, you see Snowfall Tune, I'm calling her Snowfall Dash, and since we're all in a oh, Snowfall yes. mood, why don't you Snowfall review the Snowfall in the thing before I Snowfall you right in the Snowfall? I certainly would Snowfall this with you, Snowfall Quill. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a bad episode of the Smurfs. <laughs> oh, wow. Sapphire Snowfall Hearts. Nah. Sapphire oh, Snowfall Song. That sort of rings a bell, I don't know. 
<laughs> My little that's... snowfall, snowfall, snowfall. <laughs> Sapphire, it sounds go. like you're, you're planning to marry uh, Snowfall Frost. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't mind. Oh, ooh, a little shit. I really don't care. <laughs> But Dune, I know that I know that Dash is is one of your faves. Yes, uh, and you mentioned Bob Cratchit was a surprise for her. Bob Cratchit yeah, without any family. I would have thought I I thought when I was watching this episode that Twilight would self insert herself into this role, and I'm thinking to myself, why Rainbow Dash? Like I see all the other characters, I thought Rainbow Dash would have fit more into Pinky's role, but then I realized, wait, no, that's Pinky. So, but. I can't really say too much because she wasn't used that much. She was only there for like one scene and then well, kind of just she, swept off. Well, yeah, but in both scenes she was used very minimally. So it felt like I guess they just randomly picked her to, for that character because they needed Rainbow Dash to be in there. So yeah, okay. sounds about but right. it was good. I did like it. I it was unconventional, but it was still good for what we had. I loved that the end was just like no. I I'll tell you this though. The one part I loved is where. Like, uh, Although, actually, she fits into two roles, if you really think about it. She plays the role of, like, a Bob Crackett, but she also plays the role of the nephew, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I get it. No, no the thing I loved is the scene where, um, let's see, Starlight Snowfall, whatever, tells her, like, oh, well, I guess you can go on, like, and go and enjoy the festivities. Dash doesn't even wait a second, just like, thanks, and just dashes off, and I'm like, yep. That's what she would do. <laughs> that was the only but, funny thing, thing she had in this episode, but and yeah, she could she could double as the as the nephew, just reminding you know there's more to life than money. Except there's the problem: Snowfall is not about money. I mean, she's a freaking mm-hmm. alchemist. She ain't got no. She's... Also, well, I, I just pondered, huh? Does this would this mean that Scootaloo would be ti- would be Tiny Tim? <laughs> that, that could no, work. Featherweight was Tiny Tim, Probably. wasn't he? It was random. We'll get to that. Oh, we'll get to that. This is where Snowfall doesn't work for me as a Scrooge character. Two things. One is she hasn't done anything really wicked until she resolves this new, to create this new spell. Her goal is to improve Equestria to make the place better. Now, Ebenezer Scrooge had no altruism in, in his spirit, in his character. That's why he had to go through this journey. Snowfall has that altruism, but do, but does not live in the moment or reach out to others. So there's an interesting lesson there. But for the villainizing that others will will view her, it seems a little out of place when a whole room boos her for wanting to improve Equestria. It's like, wow, really, guys? Really? I'd be more into it if like she was seen like snapping at people for not like doing anything, like, working hard or anything. But no, it's just Dash. Like, that could be a reason to antagonize her, but I don't see that, like, in the actual Christmas review or whatever. Cool. But I think here is the way that she's doing it because everybody wants to improve. Like, I could just say that, hey, I want to improve Silver's show. His after the facts are coming slow, so I shall help him improve it by doing something. And that something is going to his house, whipping him with a whip, and forcing him to work. Is it Tuesday already? <laughs> yes, yeah. it is! Oh, God. But doing so is potentially evil. Like, that is not what you do to friends. That, that is just mean and bad. But it will get after the facts out ASAP. The end doesn't justify the... You know what the saying is, like... Dance don't justify the means. Yes. Although, if you did do that, uh, it's, uh, I, you'd probably hear, Hi, I'm Silver Crew. Ah, oh, thank you for watching. Oh, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Cool. People will like it. I- I'm sure of it. <laughs> Question is, who would be whipping you? Uh, probably. Um... Question is, who wouldn't be? <laughs> <laughs> pick, your, pick, pick your list then. <laughs> Sorry, Silver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no. So anyway, after Dash goes away, we get a song about how Snowfall here is trying to get rid of Christmas with a spell. And said spell is a very powerful one because before she can activate it, the ghost comes in and stops her. Are we going to glance over this song? Because this is honestly one of the best songs. Like, 
as much as everyone parades like Luna's Future to be the best song ever, this is the best song the entire episode. Yeah, I like this. <laughs> I don't feel Luna's Future that much. The Pinkie Pie one and, well, this one is definitely your, my top two favorites. I enjoyed it, but it was not my top two. That's to come. We do finally get to see her being mean to other ponies. I mean, now that she's got this nefarious goal in mind, she steals uh, a toy from Pipsqueak, which is to instant villain cred. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Once a villain, always a villain. Yeah, but... But, but... Pipsqueak's like the jobber for this. (laughs) You'd beat him up just just to get basic street cred. Yep. And one thing I noticed here is that... Um, I'm just going to call them by their real character name, Starlight here. She has her old mean back. So, yay! She's bad. Well, yeah, no, she's better than the to her villain status, her main. If, <laughs> if it goes back to, like, the rarity copy, that means she's good, but if she has, like, this Bobby pin style, I don't know how to call it, I don't know what type <laughs> of cell that is, she's evil! Yay! You know she's bad, she's bad, bull cut. <laughs> uh, well, like we mentioned before, she's bad, the song is really awesome, uh, Toon like it, Safi likes it, Silver is okay with it, and I'm okay with it, like, there's another song that comes later that I really enjoy. But anyway, we continue on, and Thor like here is being evil, and I think what, Spike has something to say, like needs more cocoa? Oh no, that's uh, that's just in a little bit. Spike is just Starlight questions the extreme of wiping out an entire day from the space time continuum, and Spike he he this is his thing this season, reminding Starlight, hey, you tried to brainwash ponies and change time. Touche. <laughs> At some point, I've, I think Starlight's going to have to give him a smack upside the head. I know. <laughs> Or like Sunset Shimmer, with how her friends always remind her that she was a she-demon. <laughs> we get it! Yeah. Move on! <laughs> Alright, moving on, we have, as the wiki said, suddenly, Applejack X Machina. Yeah, it's funny, We we it's easier to refer to these characters by their normal show names, because unlike the ponies of a heartwarming tale, Princess Platinum, Clover the Clever, uh, Private Pansy, those characters were portrayed by the main six, but had their own personality. Mm-hmm. These characters really are just the main six. Yeah, I noticed that too, because I have a hard time remembering who they are. We have the Christmas Carol name that we could insert here, because, well, that story's memorable, but this one here, it's hard. Like, I can just remember their real name, and let's carry on kind of deal. So, yeah. Applejack goes here, comes and says that She'll be visited by three ghosts, and she should really stop doing this spell because it's not good. And Discord was supposed to be Bob Marley, but there just wasn't time. Yeah, and getting John Delancey at such short notice is not good. Planning, way ahead. You need that. And KP's tears doth flow freely. (laughs) Oh, no. Good. Oh, wow. That's mean. Discord wasn't in this episode at all. He would have been perfect, but no. Yeah, no time. So anyway, is it me or is Applejack the ghost of Christmas past? Yes. Wow, that's fast. She was the Christmas past ghost thing. I don't know. Yep. Yeah. Twilight like would have also easily fit into the uh, role if she were evil. Uh, I think it like, works. Like as the uh, Bob Marley. Why the hell did I say Bob Marley? <laughs> <laughs> don't cry, man. But Applejack makes sense to me for Ghost of Christmas Past. She is the one who's most steeped in tradition, the one who values family bonds and history the most. Uh So, yeah, she seems like a natural choice. And she, her song is in my is tied for my favorite of this episode. And it's energetic, it's lighthearted. The visuals of them flying, trotting through the air is great. Uh Of course, so is her passing through Snowfall Frost and getting that. Spectre chill. <laughs> uh, that's entertaining. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've liked, I always have enjoyed seeing ghosts and how people interact with them. That, that was, <laughs> I wonder what it actually does feel like for a ghost to pass through you. Oh, don't, no, don't, don't, don't wish for that. And if you want to see how people interact with ghosts, Ghostbusters, the new movie's coming out soon. 
oh yay, I'm one of the, I'm in the minority that's actually looking forward to it. Besides the majority of everyone that's going to hate it. <laughs> Alrighty then. I honestly have no opinion since I never, I have never seen the first movie, but I still want to see this <laughs> the trailer. Silver, you've at least seen the first Ghostbusters, right? I have seen the first Ghostbusters. This See, young Sapphire, why can't yeah, you be like me and Silver? It. We're the cultured ones. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the movie police come in to say, you need to watch this or we'll take you to the Who's Gal. <laughs> oh, come on. I just finished watching Back to the Future last night. Although you know I what? stopped you know what? because Con? I feel like staying up till like 3 in the morning. At BronyCon, I'm bringing Ghostbusters. We're going to get a movie party. Yay. Oh, God. But either way, so thankfully no one tries to fling a po- proton pack at Applejack. <laughs> you, no. That would be, actually that would be hilarious. I am the ghost of, hey, what's that, what are you doing with your horn? <laughs> and Snowfall <laughs> just starts sapping her <laughs> in, into a prison. Yeah, who are you going to call? <laughs> okay, but that someone would be else. <laughs> Indeed. So at which point she basically shuts down. <laughs> oh, but before that happens, we got to see Starlight's memory or said character playing, and as uh, who Mr. Snape here comes yeah. in and says that this is all poppycock and this is not good, like you're just wasting your time, you should put your efforts into studying and become the greatest sorcerer that ever was. Ah, yes, Professor the, Fortnart. But, but then Twilight Sparkle gets bored and is automatically more awesome by birthright, so... <laughs> so, sorry, hard work and effort, what's that? <laughs> Yeah, but still, um, it does start out how uh, Snowfall here changed because she's she was a happy-go-lucky pony. She wants to share the heart, the spirit of heartwarming and stuff. But since an adult figure tells her what to do, that changed her future. And wow, that's sad to see someone's hope and dream being crushed. Oh. By higher education. I know. It's like my college days all over again. <laughs> oh. I'm currently experiencing that, so I get ya. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to learn architecture in order to become an artist. You have to. Oh, it's wow. of life. You just got to work through your gothic phase. <laughs> uh, I'm so, already at my edgelord phase. My hair is blue in the front. So, actually, I have a question. So... When Applejack Ghost comes and swoops up Starlight and sends her on her way through a portal, did anyone notice just her basically being thrown through the air by an invisible force into a portal? Did no one notice or question that? Because to the to the uh, the eye of someone who's not watching this episode through the viewer's eyes will probably just look up and say, "Oh, hey, isn't that Snowfall? Why is she getting? Oh, okay, <laughs> that happened." <laughs> yeah, that, that that will be interesting. Oh, it's Tuesday already. Yep. Uh, oh, stuff all got taken by a poltergeist. Good riddance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, darn. pretty much. Oh, darn, she's back. She's back in her home. And now wondering where's the ghost of Christmas past. She calls, like, um, ghost, you still here? And woo, another ghost appears. The ghost of Christmas present. <laughs> present. You're yes. up the moon. Yep. And, Christmas picky. And this is my favorite song here. The tempo, the song, the feel, I love it. I think it's jazz. It's jazzy beat to yes, it. Yes, I love jazz. Old-timey jazzy type of feel for me. Yep, and I love it. And they have the whole banter about stuff. And long story short, they are brought to Rainbow Dash's place to show what they're doing. Yay. Well, hang on. We, we, get, we have that jazzy song, but... I promise we talk about doing tap dancing with with featherweights. Yep. Now here, here's the thing. Uh, Snowfall slash Starlight both argue that it's basically an excuse to give presents, and that everyone thinks that if you just get together and and party, that'll solve Equestria uh, Equestria's problems. So here's the Ghost of Christmas presents saying that all you need to do is give to- to, uh, tap shoes to the physically uh, ailed, and a hot cocoa to a homeless pony, and everything's fine. That's stupid. <laughs> you're being Oh, stupid. you're just looking way that's, too that's deep. That's a temporary... 
That's a temporary solution. Hooray, I have hot cocoa, but I still don't have a home. I guess I'll go, I, tr- I'll, I guess I'll go sip this in my box. <laughs> At least they're happy for that one moment. Just let them have that moment. I can't because I want them to be happy all day long. See, I'd be nice, but I just feel like, okay, you're, you're, you're kind of validating Starlight, uh, slash Snowfall, you know, in a sense. I mean, the whole point of, the whole point of Scrooge's change to generosity was that he started to improve lives beyond just one day. Uh, you know, he gave of himself and he carried the spirit of Christmas every day, which is ultimately what the holidays are meant to instill. Mm-hmm. You're not just celebrating it one day. You just remind people of the best and hope they carry it forward. Uh, what last weekend was Father's Day uh, at the time of recording, mm-hmm. and my family often says we don't need gifts. You know, every day is is Mother's Day, Father's Day for us. Oh, um, yep, I know that feeling. So that that's kind of the spirit. So the imagery of fixing everything with with hot cocoa and, and uh, tap shoes kind of sours it for me, or weakens the ideal. Plus. I'm about to make this super dark. Once the song ends and everything goes goes back, does everything go back to the way it was? Does, yeah. does Featherweight lose those tap shoes and air go? I don't is know. Back, is back on crutches? <laughs> the spirit giveth and the spirit taken away? Uh, oh, no, no, bad silver, bad. Yes, fall into the darkness, sing for me your symphony of tears. <laughs> Screw you, I'm not gonna cry. After sit sad moment, thank you, Silver. My pleasure. We're joined with Rainbow Dash and seeing that how happy she is, how cheerful and happy they are. And we get to see DJ Final playing on the really traditional soundboard. Oh, Final. No, um, she's not DJ. DJs didn't exist back in the, what was it, uh... Victorian, Victorian era. era. She's playing it. <laughs> yeah, she's yeah, mega. She's, she's megaphone phone three. Yeah, and I do love her glasses. Like, wow, very steampunkish. I know. But yeah, so we join them. We see how merry and happy they are, and Starlight here starts to have a change, seeing, having a feeling that hey, this is not not bad. Like, this is all good. Not really. I don't see that. Like when I during the scene, it was more like. Okay, you're doing your Pinkie Pie voice. What's next? <laughs> cool. That was adorable, Twilight. No, I'm not. <laughs> and the reason is to be with your friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Rainbow Dash is not the only one who mimics her friends. <laughs> Although there's another question I'm going to just say. Does Twilight insert her friends into every... Uh, story she reads, she just sort of imagines it with her friends as the characters now? Well, during the uh, holiday special, I remember that they were all featured in all of the stories. <laughs> but Silver, did you forget the first micro-comic featuring Twilight and the variant cover? Uh, that was her and Spike on the beanstalk? No, that's, uh, that's Spike laughing at Twilight because of Twilight's fanfic box. Well, I'm, I'm talking about more actual stories. In which case, has Twilight read Fifty Shades of Hay? No! Uh, no! <laughs> yes! And who would she envision in those roles? Oh, no! Let's, yes. 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 Oh, yes. For, uh, Silver, funny enough that you mentioned that because there's a fanfic that <laughs> does that, but no, I'm not going to mention that here. Oh, God. <laughs> Actually, I want to know, too. Later, later. <laughs> <sighs> but anyway... Uh, <laughs> I think it's been confirmed that Silver is the biggest masochist in the room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just love that everyone ever comes into this wanting to be so happy and lighthearted. And if you just skew the things a little, <laughs> you could knock people off their rockers. Uh, knowing it's, you, yes. It's uh, wonderful. It's that's wonderful. kind of be expected from you, though. Mm-hmm. But anyway, after the moment at the household where everybody's just making fun of Starlight here, um, Luna comes. Ooh, the ghost of Christmas Future comes and try to scare Starlight here. Wait, wait. Okay, oh, well. I know there's like a little bit more like before Luna's future, like the whole situation, like where they're booing her in the room. Well, they they made fun of so? they made fun of Scrooge at the party as well. His nephew did. So there, there you go again, Sapphire. Rainbow is equal parts 
Bob Marley and uh, Scrooge's nephew. But uh, I, I heard Disco was supposed to be in this episode as like the Bob Marley thing. Yeah, no time. But um, I do want to say I'm I'm very glad that Pinkie Pie's exit was her just retreating into a cloud. If she had to suffer the fate from the the Jim Carrey version of this 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 Carol, oh, yeah, you, you think I'm a masochist? Imagine how kids would react to that sight. <laughs> it's a family picture. And then everybody turned new joysy. Hey. And then Luna comes. Luna comes, scares the bejesus out of Starlight, saying that if you continue on to your ways, the Windigos will come. Ooh, scary Windigos. And, and then and... Toon's cameo comes up in this. <laughs> okay, everyone freaking <laughs> pointed that out to me when I was watching the episode. I'm just like, oh, that's a, that's a cute looking top hat. And then like after the episode, I had so many people on Twitter saying, Toon, is that you? They put you in an episode. And I'm just like, it doesn't help that it's a Pegasus <laughs> and with a top hat yep. with the hairstyle of my OC. <laughs> <laughs> And and the problem is that uh, they can't dis- uh, you can't dispute it because it's in uh, illusionary ghost colors, so it could be red. <laughs> but that would mean that uh, Tune is dead. Oh no! And we're talk- oh no! Tune is a spirit. <laughs> we're talking to a dead guy. <laughs> I see. Dead <laughs> Somebody call the Ghostbusters. Back the eighties versions. I exist <laughs> yes. now to only torment Silver Quill. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow, Silver! Why why do I feel that every time you're on this show, you're making new, new enemies instead of friends? Uh, I make frenemies. <laughs> Lots of frenemies. <laughs> it's a yeah. frenemy fest. Like me, who's ready to strangle and get hug you? Oh wow! <laughs> I'm gonna give you the biggest hug you've ever had. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> it's a choco. They call it a choco. Uh, but oh wait! Oh well, will I be put into submission? Will I have to tap out? <laughs> uh, See, at least you got that right. <laughs> but anyway, yep. it's a suplex situation. Ah, <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, Luna here explains that with everybody fighting, there's no harmony, and with no harmony, the window goes come and make things even worse and put everything into a winter wonderland of doom. I still find this funny. Uh, in this work of fiction, within fiction, mm-hmm. within fiction, <laughs> uh, Luna, the ghost of future Luna, asserts that Wendigos are real, but it's still within a uh, fiction piece. So I still find it kind of fascinating that Wendigos might not be real. Well, here's the thing about this story. Like, it... <sighs> Windigos could be real, but in this term of fiction, they're just using it to scare people or ponies. It's a metaphor. Yes, that too. The metaphor for yeah, the cold, the frost, the division. But at the same time, there's also a theme. We used a lot of cultures invented the monsters we sort of take for granted in, in fiction as warning skits. Don't go into the forest at night, not because you know, of listening to all the threats. There's a monster there and it'll eat you. <laughs> Yeah. So, something to keep those kids out of Darwinism's hands. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, apparently, there's a monster in the forest that's called natural selection. <laughs> and he's the scariest of them all. Oh, yeah. No, oh, I don't want to go back to 10th grade biology. Uh. Uh. <laughs> natural selection got Tibby after Lassie decided it wasn't worth it, so, you know. <laughs> Wow. If you think about it, like, little Phoebe goes into the well so many times. Like, how dumb can that kid be? Immensely. (laughs) But, regardless, having been properly threatened with doomsday scenarios, and an awesome Luna song. Mm -hmm. It happens that St. Germain sings for Luna, right? No. Uh, no. This was somebody, okay, uh, Kazumi Evans usually does, but this was someone brand new. Oh, really, no? Yeah, uh, let me uh, skip down to the ending credits and tell you who it is. Uh... Alright, while you do that, we'll just continue on a bit. So, after getting her butt scared, um, 
Starlight Hill says, Oh, it's still Heartswarming Eve. I can change. I shall bring in the presents for Rainbow Dash and her friends so they can enjoy parties. Yay! Nico Kazan! Nico, my uh, Apparently, the person's name is Aloma Steel. Oh, wow. Well, that sounds like an action. She's that very like talented. An action. That sounds like an action hero. <laughs> Noma Steel is back and she's ready for some blood. <laughs> or, or essence of dragon toenail, which from the dragon's point of view is a pretty sick gift. <laughs> uh, oh no! But anywho, I'm the only one who will ever love you. Ah, explosion. <laughs> uh, well, so with that, we end with Starlight being really happy and Twilight ending her story, and apparently, uh, it gives the real Starlight a change of heart and a lot of thought. And she joins the party. Yay. Yay. And happy ending. Snow everywhere. Celebrations. Yes. And end credit team. So uh, that's the review. Oh, uh, and Rainbow Dash is dad. Rainbow Dash is dad? Where? In the final big group shot, he's standing right next to both biceps and Dr. Hooves. Who? Oh, yeah. I do see him there. Blitz. There he is. Yeah, Rainbow Blitz. Nope. Rainbow's Wait, father. what? Well, okay, you see, when, 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 a Mar- when you're Marin a stallion engaged in slash fiction, a foal is born, and that mm. foal is Rainbow Dash. I, I'm sorry, I don't think it's Blitz because that's the... I thought it was Rainbow Spectrum, like for Rainbow Dash's father. Yeah, yeah I think that is it. That, that's the proper name for him. I'm just getting confused because of um, fanfics. But yes, there he is. He's there. Yay, now we need him to talk. I want to know more about him. Yep. I'm guessing Fluttershy's family couldn't come because the brother couldn't be bothered to budge. <laughs> yes. Sounds uh, about right. So, that's the re- that's the episode. So, let's go for final thoughts. Silver, my man, what do we think? Well, I have taken this episode so many dark places. <laughs> oh, you. And loved every minute of it. <laughs> oh, you. But all in all, it is a fun, lighthearted story. It's, it's, the journey is enjoyable. You know the destination. You know basically the outline of events, but they really put a lot of effort into the visuals, into the fun winks at the audience. So it is an enjoyable tale overall. I always just question when everyone acts like, oh no, this person doesn't want to do what we're doing. Well, sometimes part of the holidays is letting people be themselves and Give them the freedom to choose. Let them know that they're always welcome, but it's not mandatory. Makes sense. Oh boy, this episode. I have a feeling this episode would have meant a lot more if it came out during Christmas, like for me, because I, when it comes to Christmas lately, during the past couple of years, it's been sort of there, like downgrade due to all the commercialism that goes into it. I have a feeling that this would have really brought in a lot more spirit, like, for me personally, if it came out during Christmas. Or at least in July. (laughs) This would have been nice, too, but no, they had to do it during May. Which still boggles my mind to this day on why this was scheduled for May of all times. Yeah... Other than that, I think I've pretty much stated why I like this episode and why I think this episode is good, but isn't perfect. Alright. And Toon, what are you, my good man? As I said before with my first impressions, um, I like that this episode was able to take something that was predictable, but put a fresh twist on it with, um, with the way the characters were used, with the songs, all of it. I did really enjoy this episode, though. I remember after this, I was just like, yep, I found my new favorite episode of the season. There was a lot of heart to it, a hearth, whatever you want to say. Songs were great. Seeing Starlight used again as this sort of character, um, as the villain character was great because I feel that's her natural thing. As much as we, uh, the people are going to push, uh, having her be the, um, good guy, you know, the hero fitting in with Twilight and such, one's a villain, always a villain, I think, and it still really suits her. And, um, let me think, what else? Yeah, it was really unusual for this episode to be put in May. I feel like they'll have a rerun with it, like, in December or something. Uh, and as for me, I 
I like this episode. It's a fresh spin on the whole A Christmas Carol story. Like I said before, this story has been told a thousand times by multiple people, even with puppets. So having it told in pony form with a new twist to it is pretty interesting. Unfortunately, they didn't really tell the whole story to its fullest potential because of time limitation. But that's beside the point. Songs were really good and awesome. And I felt it was a good addition to the show. And I agree with Seppi that this episode came out a little bit too early. They could have bounced around the episode when it was coming near um, July or August or maybe September. I would agree with that or maybe let's just say October but if they felt that this needs to be aired now it's their choice at least we got a new episode out of it so other than that I say I enjoy this episode so anyway that's the episode so next week's episode review we're going to review My Little Pony Friends Forever issue 25 Uh, that's starring Prince Blue Blood and Shining Armor. Oh, small correction, it's issue 26. Yes, issue 26. Yeah. Sorry, my bad. But still. Norman, go sit in the corner right now, man. Aww. Go. But anyway, that's next week's episode. Well, technically not next week because I have an announcement to make because um, this is going to be the last episode for this week because um, on the 4th of July weekend or week, I am going to be away. I'm going to be away on the vacations because I've been doing this thing for almost four years now without a vacation. So I think I deserve one now. <laughs> four years, man. Criminy, why are you still here? Go, go. You're getting sucked <laughs> out of the door right now. Go. No way. I just need to end this first. So anyway, um, I'll be heading to the land where everything wants to try to kill you. That is the Aussie lands or Australia. More specifically, Perth. If you guys are there and want to hook up with me, uh, send an email at com, and you can contact me there. And I'm going to try something new with you guys here because I've been getting a lot of comments in the YouTubes and a lot of people have a lot of good um, comments there. And I've picked out the best of the best. And I decide that we could share them with you guys here and we'll, well talk about it like discuss it we if we agree if there's something off of it and whatnot and so we got a few here and well i think we're not going to read everything so we're just going to pick out some of our favorite so silver you want to pick out first so going back as far as uh season six episode seven newbie dash let's see here how do i even pronounce this name nemdorotorius no there's a g in there nemdorogatorius all in all, it's a good episode, and Rainbow Dash becoming a Wonderful is surely a big milestone on the show, yay. However, it doesn't feel as epic to me as, for example, Crusaders of the Lost Mark. Yes, the, the Crusaders of the Lost Mark had this big climax and light show where they finally earned their cutie marks and everyone is celebrating. Newbie Dash was more, you're a Wonderful now. Get over here. Ah. The Crusaders of the Lost Mark is kind of a built-up episode where, hey, they finally get their cutie marks. This one was... They just dropped it down and there we are Wonder Balls now mess up so we can bully you. Ha <laughs> But anyway, I think it's time that we take our leave and I be off my vacation. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill, bring you of darkness. I am Sapphire Heart Song, trying to bring in the light. I'm the Tune Critic keeping you totally tuned for your entertainment. And we'll guys catch you next week with another amazing show. I'll see you guys later. Adios. Bye bye. Oh, that's right. No sound box. Wait on two. Soon. Wait on two. Guess it's called guess courtesy. I, I think he did say something. Uh... I did. <laughs> I did. I, I think he said at the same time as Seppi. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>